From flaming pad thai to dim sum, I've put together a list of 10 must-try dishes when you come to Bangkok, with some familiar favourites and some under-the-radar stars which you just need to try. You do not want to miss this. Now, we're onto the pork, or the mu. Akrapao mu, this is the traditional one, I'd say. This is the one you're going to find most often. Again, garlic. Minced pork this time goes into the pan. Same in the wok over the high heat. Fresh chilies go in, red and green. As ever, it's exactly the same recipe, guys. It's just with a different meat. Chilies are in. Sauce goes in. And again, just as quick as the, as the prawn one. How interesting is this, that when they fry the egg, they separate them, so you should put the white in first and get that cooking, and then the yolk goes in on top. And that is how she gets the perfect fried egg. I'd never have thought of that. Look at that. How cool is that? Right. Pakrapao Mu. And as I say, this is one that if you're ordering, just ordering pad krapao, it will probably come as mu, it'll probably come as pork, if you're not getting a choice, of course. <clears throat> this is the one where you search for a recipe in Europe or England or wherever you are, this is the one that will probably pop up. And again, it looks amazing. I just love the color of this dish. You have the white rice as the blank canvas below, and then the vibrant green of the Thai basil followed by the pot of those red chilies. Level five spicy, I didn't go too crazy, but there's a lot of chili in there. And that perfectly fried egg on top again. Eggs here are 10 baht to add on top of the dish. And trust me, you need to be adding that 10 baht. So let's break open that yolk. <laughs> it just pops. And the difference between an overcooked egg and a perfectly fried egg is like night and day. What you want to do is get that yolk all mixed in there, add a little bit of the fish sauce with chili once again. And then get that mixed in. This is the one that I've had before. So I know this one is good, but I want to show you guys. Mm. This is one which I do not get tired of eating. An intense flavor of pork. Which is important because when you have so much spice, sometimes the flavor of meat can get lost. But when you have the good quality, like this, the porkiness comes through. You can taste the oyster sauce, you can taste the palm sugar, you can taste the soy sauce. And then the krapao leaves and then the spice from the chili as it hits you. And then that egg just brings it all together. The egg yolk just brings it all together with a little crunch from the fried white. This is one of the best dishes in Thailand. You cannot come to Thailand without trying pad krapao. And I think you need to come on the other side of the river into Tombori to original Pakrapao to try these dishes, or at least one of these dishes. Trust me, you will not regret making the journey across here. And the good thing about the rice, having this plain white rice below, is that it acts as like a dampener to the spice. So you can increase your heat a little bit because when it's mixed with that rice, it's not quite as spicy as what you saw when it was in there, hitting the back of my throat. Mm. Another winner. I think, well, I think you need to order them both, to be honest. They're very good value and very tasty. And you may only be here once, so hey, why not order it? Both of them. But if you're only gonna order one, oh man, that's a tough choice. The prawn one is amazing. And I'm looking at it now and it's looking back at me saying, choose me, choose me. But I think if you're going to have one, maybe you have to go with the pork. Not because it's necessarily better than the prawn. It's more the traditional synonymous dish that you're going to see everywhere. So you can use that as a baseline for the rest of them. But yeah, if you're like me, just order them both and tell her that I told you that. I won't spend too long on the description of this broth, but we should try it. <laughs> Mm. Actually, it is very good. It's very clear, it's very clean. Yes, it's a meat broth, but actually you can taste the vegetables in there. 
very rich, very intense. And it's a nice palate cleanser between the two dishes, actually, or at the end of your dish. I normally eat it at the end, so don't skip the broth. Cop kun cap. Bye bye, cap. Bye bye. Bye bye, cap. Bye bye. Okay, first stop in this tiny little alleyway in the market. Where are we? So we're at Ti Yai Chuan Chim. So it means uh, very hot pan. It means very hot pan. Muscle omelette, very hot pan. Okay, so obviously. Mr. Yai, Mr. Yai. So obviously, we're going to eat muscle, cooked muscle omelette here. Yes, well, it's actually a muscle pancake. Some okay. people call it an omelette. I would call it a pancake because it's like a rice flour batter, um, but they crack eggs in it, so some people call it an omelette. But I would call it a pancake for sure. But it's not like any sort of pancake you've ever had before. I, I'm pretty sure of that. It's very, very unique. Normally I avoid these, I'm a bit scared of the raw oysters. But Gary assures me these are fresh, so I should be okay. Yeah, for me, this is the best hoid hot shot in the world, probably? In the world? In the world, probably, yeah. And I have, before anyone with sarcastic comments, I have eaten in every <laughs> single one in the world, so there. Let me tell you a little bit about how this pancake is cooked. The rice flour batter and the seafood goes into the hot pan before she cracks an egg on top, which is why I called it an omelette, but yeah, it is a pancake. Just look at that hot pork fat that she just pours over the top of that pancake to get the richness into it. It's then flipped as you would expect and then cooked on the other side. When it's done, it's topped with sawtooth coriander, or just coriander as we would know it, a bit of white pepper, and then it is plated and ready to eat. Just how good does that look? Okay, I just want to talk you quickly through what's in this pancake with Tale Todd, although it has been actually just destroyed by Gary here, but um, <laughs> we won't mind that. Um, so yeah, crispy pancake. And you can see, because of the rice flour, it has gone very crispy on the outside. It's cooked in pork fat, and then they crack an egg on top of it. Inside, uh, you can get the different types of seafood, but we've actually gone for everything. So we've got squid in here, we've got prawns in here, we've got large mussels, if I can find one, and then the apparent star of the show, the bit I'm a little bit nervous to eat, is the fresh oysters. Uh, but like I said before, Gary assures me this is super fresh and the best version of this, so hopefully I'll be okay. And then it's served on a bed of bean sprouts just to give that freshness and crunch. So how do we normally style this, this pancake? I will put on a little bit of pig nam pao, which is chili fish sauce, on some mine. But this is already really well seasoned, so like if you don't have a palate that really likes salt, then maybe that's not the way for you to go. So most Thai people will put on this uh, so pig, which is chili sauce, or si la jia, some people would know it as, but the Thai version just kind of just tastes like chili ketchup. So for me, it just tastes like ketchup, but a lot of Thai people, like my Thai friends, will, anything that's fried in pork fat, uh, or just fried in general, uh, like this, um, like a quid the alcohol guy or something like that, they will have this with it. But in here, they actually have a sweet chili sauce, which I'm not usually a mad fan of, because I'm not that into sweet things, but this has been made here in-house, uh, and. It's a little bit more sour, a little bit more tart than your usual um, sweet chili sauce. So we'll try a little bit of this and see what you think, Joe. Okay, let's try this pancake. Pretty excited for this, the first food of the day. So I want to get as much of that seafood as I can. A mussel, squid, try and hunt one of those oysters if Gary hasn't eaten them all. Oh, we got one here. And a bit of that pancake. All right, full mouthful. Straight away you get the crispiness of the pancake. Those edges are so crispy where it's cooked in the pork fat and you get the richness from the pork fat. But then it turns to the creaminess of the mussel and the oyster and the softness from inside that pancake. It's the first time I've eaten this, but I think I'll be eating this a lot again. It's one of the best things I've had so far on my trip in Bangkok. And what I really like is that crunch from the bean sprouts below because the textures are quite soft other than the outer edges of the pancake but the bean sprouts give the freshness. Top marks. Alright, last bite. 
Really, it's so good. And the price is amazing too. Just the ones with just a single seafood, you can get 50 or 70 baht depending on the size. This one we had is 150 baht, but for me that's worth it. It's packed with seafood. And uh, Gary was just speaking to the lady here, uh, saying that they've been here for 55 years. 55 years making this this pancake and you can tell you can tell the quality in the taste and yeah they wouldn't have been here for 55 years otherwise okay we have ordered a lao style somtam and we've eaten a few somtams on this channel but i don't think i've had a lao style somtam so let's see what that's like compared to the thai style and as ever with gary he's ordered it head mac very spicy and it's got some fermented crab in there as well. It's gonna have that nice, fishy, funky flavor. And if you can hear in the background, it keeps trying to thunder a few drops of rain and bang, 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 bang. Keep our fingers crossed. Ah, Swadi Cup. I've made a little friend. What's your name? I don't think she's learned English yet, but give me a high five. Way! And the thunder in the background. Look at this Lao style somtam with a huge chunk, a wedge of cabbage on the side and as ever you've got the papaya in there, tomatoes, a lot of chilli, green beans, some of that pickled fermented crab and then of course the lime juice and the sauce in the bottom. Cab. You cannot have it without sticky rice, a bag of sticky rice. I've never tried a Lao style somtam and I presume it's fairly similar to the Isan style because they are close, probably the same thing, but I've never seen these. And what are these green seeds called? Uh, Katien. Katien, I've never seen them in there before. Let's start off trying a bit of that sauce. Mm. That's why I, I just love somtam. The first flavor for me is the there's a sourness that hits you. And then comes the funky badek. It's not super funky, it's not overpowering, but for me it adds that rounded mouth flavor and then bang, the chili hits you. Like this is a spicy one. I don't know about you, but for me this is fairly spicy. I mean, look at the amount of chilies in there. And just in case you don't know, you eat everything in here apart from the crab. Don't try and eat the crab. The crab is just in there for the flavor, the uh, funky fishy flavor, but Let's try, actually try some of that salad. Let's get a bit of everything on that, including some of the chilies. Mm. Crunchy, fresh. Actually, those seeds add an additional crunch. I mean, the papaya is crunchy anyway, but man, she is, she is trying to kill us with that chili. I'm pretty good at handling the spice, but I can feel myself starting like my... <laughs> It's attacking the back of my throat. My mouth is on fire. My eyes are starting to water. That is what I like in this somtam. But the flavor is pretty good. Very similar to the Thai Isan style somtam, I must say. So if you like blara, try this one with padek. We're going to eat enough to make sure you like it. So this is the original somtam from Lao. So we've got pupala, so, or pupadek. I'm into it. I'm into it. I'm converted. Everyone, I've got Joe Perilla to thank for this because, to be honest, I only really order it when I'm with him. Um, I wouldn't usually order pala or in the same thing, but I wouldn't usually order that. And I've just started ordering it when I'm with Joe, and now I've eaten a little bit. I think I'm used to the flavor now, so um, yeah, I really do quite like that. If you have or you haven't seen one of my videos, earlier videos in Thailand, the chili challenge where I take on a Thai girl at Mark Wien's restaurant, I would say that is the spiciest thing. I've had in Thailand, but that was more from the, the white pepper heat. This has to be the hottest thing I've eaten for just a pure chili heat. And my mouth is on fire. It smells incredible. And I have eaten here about five years ago. I think it's worth grabbing some and we can take it to the park for our little picnic in Benjikin Park. You're right, it just looks so good. We can't walk past this. It's, it's just the smell of the garlic, that fried garlic um, is unbelievable. Sticky, and, uh, sticky yeah, garlic sticky on top. Sticky garlic. 
Oh man, just how good does this chicken look? And trust me, it is awesome. <laughs> we got a little bag of chicken, half a chicken, 130 baht. Um, so here's the pot of fried chicken. So she's given us breast, uh, a drumstick, wing, a little bit of thigh. And on top of that, what they're famous for really is this gratiam jiao, the crispy fried garlic. So we're going to pour that over the top. Like get this completely covered, guys. And then I'm gonna swallow the rest of this. I'm gonna save a little bit. This is what you gotta do. When you pour this out for someone else, you save a little bit in the bag and you eat that for yourself. <laughs> this stuff One is for amazing. the chef. We've got nam jim gai, sweet chili sauce. Nam jim jiao, which is the tamarind fish sauce, palm sugar. This one's mine. This one's Joe's. <laughs> All right, what else have we got? So I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We'll get our, we'll get our, uh, We'll get Uncle's Grilled Chicken as well. What we'll do, we'll do a comparison, change the video title to... The Polo best Fried grilled chicken Best Grilled in Chicken in the, the best park in the world. <laughs> All right, I will fight someone to the death for a drumstick over a breast. <laughs> I'm gonna have this. Or do you want this and I'll have the thigh, Joe? No, you do that, I'll go for the thigh. Oh, I'm gutted, I want the yeah. thigh. <laughs> as, soon as, as soon as you said drumstick, I was like, got it. All right, you can, have drum, you can have thigh there, I'll have thigh yeah, here, deal, yeah? Yeah, deal, deal. It looks good though. I know it's been sat in the takeaway box for a little while. We took a little while to get over, so maybe it's gone slightly dry compared to how moist it is. But that, I mean, look at the crispy, crunchy garlic. I, it's so good. Salty, savory, umami. Would you just eat a bowl of that? I would eat a bowl of that. Easy, easy. I mean, Have I wouldn't- they fried that in chicken fat? It mu must be. It just no. tastes like chickeny garlic doesn't it don't go on a date afterwards but yeah. that well i haven't eaten the chicken yet but that is the thing about this polo fried chicken joe's right it's all about the crispy crunchy garlic and some people say that and i've even um aimed that at polo fried chicken before because everyone rates it so high everyone yeah but if it wasn't for the crispy garlic there wouldn't be anything special but there is the crispy garlic so that's what makes it special Right, man, this is a romantic picnic. And I know I said I'd have the thigh, but you need to try this. It's so juicy and moist. Cheers, mate. Try that. That's good. Mm. Let's try a little bit more of this polo fried chicken. Thigh and leg is the best for me. I know Gary feels the same on that one, but very juicy. Very tasty chicken, but the star is that crunchy, crispy, almost chewy, savory garlic on top. Mm. That I'm, sh I'm convinced that's the reason everyone goes to Polo Fried Chicken because that, that fried garlic just elevates it above a lot of other Gaiyangs. I'm not gonna say it's the best I've ever tasted, but it's, it's, it's definitely up there in contention simply because that garlic is so good. The leg and the thigh has stayed super, super moist. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you can just order thigh and leg, right? Yeah, you yeah. don't have to have the half chicken. Any chicken aficionado will tell you that the leg is the best part anyway, leg and wing. I almost feel bad for uncle now. He's got a tough job, but his look good. We'll, we'll save some of the crispy garlic to put on uncle's as well. Should we try a bit, bit, of, a yeah. bit of uncle's? Yeah, watch like grab a bit of that. All right, so different. So we've got Gai Todd and Gai Yang. Ah, uh, okay, Gai Todd. I called it Gai Yang. I do that all the time, mate. No, oh, but actually, Uncle's. You can taste the barbecue on Uncle's. Can, yeah. Try Uncle's with a bit of that fried garlic. Mm. Uncle's tastes more like a classic English barbecue, <laughs> doesn't it? That's the winner. Uncle's chicken, Polo's garlic. Ah. Oh. Smashed it out of the park. But you're right. That taste, because he was, he was cooking it on the grills in front yeah, of us. Yeah, yeah. That's the flavor I associate with barbecue chicken. Yeah, yeah. As they say, winner, winner. Gai yang dinner. <laughs>
where have you brought us? All right, today, true to form, I've brought you to probably, and I can say this with good conscience, the best dim sum shop I have been to personally in Bangkok. That's a common theme for the start of these videos with you. It is. But have I ever let you down yet? You haven't let me down, I'll give you that. And it looks pretty awesome, looks very local, looks very busy. absolute feast turner and I said I've never had dim sum before and what a start this is going to be. I'm gonna let Gary talk about them because having never had dim sum before I don't really know what we've got here so he'll introduce them and then we'll both give them a try and let you know how it is but I already get the sense that this place is going to be good because it's absolutely rammed. All right Joey so what I want to do mate if it's all right with you is I want to start you on what I think, although I think you'll enjoy most of it, I think this you'll enjoy le least, just because there's nothing wrong with it. Very well made, but it's the sweetest. And I know like me, yeah, you don't really like sweet, right? Not my, not my thing. So have a go with the Muldang. I'm going to start on these, am I? Yeah, I'm going to start on the ones you're going to like the least. Starting me on the worst. I mean, it I looks mean that's good. subjective, isn't it? But, <laughs> yeah. um, it looks good, but we've said, we've said this before, like we have, salty palettes and if you have a sweeter palette like you're gonna like these don't just because we say it's our least favorite doesn't mean it's bad right like we should caveat that anyway and you haven't tried it yet and i haven't <laughs> tried it yet which is also important mm. the flavor of the mulang is strong actually you can taste the pork coming through there i i love the texture of this stuff that like not sticky, but the soft rice. What is it? Rice. Rice flour. flour. I think there's a touch of mung bean flour, and I think they're using lard as well. Okay. Um, to give it that sort of See, this is how silkiness. Much of an amateur, I am. I know absolutely nothing about dim sum, so it's a it's, it's a new experience for me. But what I think it needs, and you're right, is just a touch, a little bit of that black vinegar, yeah. Black vinegar. I think that will make it more aligned to what I like. Okay, that takes on to another level. It is great. Should have tried it first, as we said. It is great. With the black vinegar, perfect. Yeah, I think I think if you try the prawn one, right? I think if you try the prawn one, you're going to like this more. Because although it's the same sauce, uh, it hasn't got the sweet mordang inside. Sure. And actually, yeah, you can taste the sweetness coming from that pork. Going to do another dip in the black vinegar. Juicy prawn in the middle. It is less sweet. Works really nicely again with that black vinegar. I prefer the prawn to the pork, I must say. But that's a pretty good start for my dim sum journey. And look what we've got in front of us. Cannot wait to get tapped in. What's next? I have also never had a soup dumpling. All right. So you've got nothing to compare these two, but for me. Oh, you can see as you lift them up, the stock in the inside. And as Gary explained, as Gary explained on his video, they make these by making the stock, a very rich, intense stock of whatever flavour it is, and they boil it and boil it with the bones, which makes the stock very gelatinous. And then when you cool that down, it sets. You can then cube that up, it's put in the middle of the wrapper, and then when you cook it, that obviously melts and you get the stock inside. You can get large ones, these are obviously small ones. You're meant to just eat them as one, so that's what I'm going to do. Mm. It explodes in your mouth. I didn't expect there to be so much stock. And then there's also minced pork inside. Slightly sweet on the stock, but that's such a fun, I mean, it's fun, right? That's a fun one to eat. Yeah, Let's yeah. say you bite it and it just bursts. But you are right, Gary said as well, like 
the base. Is it the base or is it the top where they folded it over? Because it is slightly thick, yeah. and I think that takes away from it a little bit. But Did very delicious, very tasty. Try this one with the crispy. With the crispy chili. Oh, sorry, maybe give me some more, boss. Touch more, thank you. Oh, and even serving. Serving, thank you. Service with a small and a roaming Ah, let's get a big helping of that. And actually, this crispy chili isn't spicy, so it looks like I'm putting a lot on. Yeah, it's, it's not more, spicy at all. It's not spicy at all. It's more like a, it's a very savoury flavour. I would say umami flavour if that means anything to you. But the reality is, it's just like MSG on steroids. And it is absolutely delicious. Mm. That, sorry. That is much better balanced. The crispy jelly balances out the slight sweetness in that stock. And it's not too sweet. It's not like the sauce on, on these other ones here, which, I mean, which really were sweet. I mean, that needed black vinegar. But yeah, the balance between those two. It is awesome. And with that crispy chili, it is just like an umami bomb in your mouth. Okay guys, this is what we're looking for. Yam Nim Kao Todd, as I say, 60 baht or 80 baht. It is just a little stool right next to the bridge and just a few meters away from the railway market that we're at, which is just here. And you're looking for this, this green stool. Okay, in goes the fermented pork, lime juice, fish sauce, roasted chili paste, little bit of sugar. Mix it up. Ginger, spring onions, shallots, and that, that is not rice noodle, that is pig skin, and then that crispy fried rice ball, which will crush up, which gives a nice texture in the salad. I love this salad, it's like a texture flavor bomb, which will beat all of that up. Chop it up, and that is your crispy rice fermented pork salad. Okay, yum nim kao tod, fermented crispy rice salad, and I must admit I'm pretty damn full already, but there's no carbohydrates in this one. What looks like noodles, as I said, is actually pork skin, so hopefully it should be easy to eat. I know we saw it all go in, but Look how red it is with the chili, and she's added dry chilies on top. And yeah, you can just see, it's all just been bashed up, the textures in there, there's ribbons of ginger. Fried rice has almost turned into like a breadcrumb, I guess. And uh, yeah, it is one of my favorite salads, I must say, just the textures and the flavors in it. And it actually comes with like a garden of vegetables. And I've just come actually off the main road, just in a little street down by the market and next to the railway station, as you heard when the train went by. And look how cool this is with the painted garages. Pretty cool. But I just thought I'd get away from the sound, actually. Anyway, let's try this salad. I have had this before, but apparently this is one of the best. Mmm. Wow. Wow. First things first, well, actually, first things first. It's spicy. I asked her for spicy, and she definitely delivered. I mean, I think she's got the dry roasted chili paste in there, so it does build on you. But, mm, and actually the ginger gives some heat as well, raw ginger. But the rice is super, super crunchy. That's the first texture that hits you. And you get the chewiness of that pork skin. The chili then starts to build in your mouth. And then the sourness from the lime juice finished off by the sweetness from that sugar. Sometimes these dishes are just either a bit too sweet or a bit too acidic or a bit too salty and you have to add something to them. But actually this one, this salad, you could see she's made it before. She moves so fast. She's so confident when she's doing it. She's obviously done this for quite a long time. I didn't ask her for how long, but she's got the balance perfect in the salad. It really doesn't need anything doing to it other than maybe chasing it 
with a little bit of cucumber. As ever, guys, I'll leave the links in the description so you can find these places. And that's on all of my videos, no matter what they are. Okay, banh mi noodles go in. Thin egg noodles. And she doesn't make them herself, but she buys them off someone who does. So they're not factory made. And oh, just a little bit of that sauce goes in with them. Very, very quick to cook in that broth. Uh, this is water or stock? Chicken stock? Uh, no, no, no. Just water? Just water yeah. ah, okay, but it looks that colour because of the starch. Uh -huh. That comes off the noodles. So all of the noodles will be cooked in there. And then this is the one with the broth. Ooh. Noodles go into the bowl. Ooh. Okay, in goes with a bit of leg meat. Should chop that up. Trust me, guys, the best bit about this duck noodles is you get a little bit of everything. And they get warmed up, this time in the stock, and then straight into that bowl. These are the dry noodles, if you hadn't guessed. A little bit of white pepper, and then a little bit of stock from the duck legs. And that is the dry noodles done. Okay. And you also get the selection of the rice noodles. Ah, okay, yeah. chai, these are good. Okay. So again, you get the slightly fatter ones or flatter ones, should I say, or the thin ones as well. But again, I've gone with the, gone with the flat. So in with a bit of blood cake this time, duck blood. Yes. And the noodles are cooking as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. touch of sugar, fried garlic, it looks slowly fried so it looks <laughs> like it's going to be super tasty, another bit of chicken leg, a wing, wing, wings and legs in that pot, and that's where you know the flavour is, again chopping that up, About a little bit of what does this look like? This looks like liver, um, liver, liver yes, um, stomach, stomach, yes, and intestine. Trust me, guys, super tasty. You definitely want that in there. A little bit of the rich broth. Ah, oh, so much better. <laughs> right, let's try it. Mm. Rice noodles are rice noodles, of course, but there's a nice texture to these. She doesn't overcook them. So they're soft, but there's a slight chew on them. There's a slight texture to them. And of course, they're just covered in that delicious, delicious broth. Mm. You can see why everyone orders this one. And as I said in that broth, it's very complex. It's very light, but it is very complex. Very rich from the duck itself, but you have that background sweetness and spice, not heat, spice from the cinnamon, from the star anise, from ginger. And with any noodle soup, if the soup is good, the dish itself is normally pretty good. And the soup here is amazing. What I can't believe is how much meat is in this for 55 baht. I mean, it's crazy. Yes, it's leg and it's wing, and it's offal, which obviously doesn't cost as much as breast, which is why you pay more for breast, of course, but, it's still absolutely packed with meat. And it's still on the bone actually. So you know what? I have washed my hands. I'm just gonna pick it up. Mm. It is so soft, melt in the mouth, rich, fatty. Mm, the flavor of the wing. If you like any sort of chicken or duck, you know wing is one of the best cuts you can have, but There is so much flavor there. Right, the liver. Nice fat slice of liver. Mm, very tasty actually. Like, I'm not the biggest fan of liver, but here it's not overpowering. It's not bitter in your mouth. 
you know it's liver, you know it's offal because it's got that texture. And actually that's the texture of liver which I don't overly like, that like sponginess. But actually this is more smooth than spongy and balanced against that rich broth, pretty good. The other one, which I definitely recommend you try guys, is the intestine. And this one, this one I do like. The bowl is like a crunch, it's not a crunch, but as a texture, maybe you can hear it on mic. It is chewy, you definitely need to work for it, but the more you chew, juices and fat maybe comes out of it, and more flavor comes out of it. Actually for me, the intestine, in this bowl of noodles, the intestine is actually on par with the duck itself because there's so much flavor in that. And I think it sucks up some of that broth too. Weird, isn't it, right? Intestines can be on par with duck meat. But the other wonder, if I can find it, is the blood cake. And we've seen blood cake before on the Kalman guy, but this is duck blood cake. And yes, it looks strange. Yes, it sounds strange, but I promise you, it's delicious. Mm. I say it every time, you just would not know that that is blood. It almost tastes like a rich duck dumpling. Soft, it melts in your mouth, it disappears very quickly. But yeah, don't be, don't be scared of that one. Absolutely delicious. First stop, Gary has brought us to a very special Kalmangai store. And yes, we have eaten Kalmangai before on this channel, but Gary promises me this is an amazing Kalmangai. And hey, I've got to trust him, he didn't let me down last time. But I didn't tell you much about what Kalmangai was last time or how it was made, so I'll let Gary explain and then we'll order and we'll give it a try. Okay, as I said, we have eaten Kalmangai before, but I haven't told you the details about the dish and how it's cooked. And I've got Gary back here by popular demand on the channel, just to tell us a little bit about Kalmangai. You're too kind, listen. <laughs> so, it sounds like a very boring dish, doesn't it? Boiled chicken and rice, as I said, but the flavor comes from, you take, the fat from like inside the cavity of the chicken, you can take it from the neck, you can take it from wherever you want, right? You render that down, so you render out the chicken fat, fry off garlic. Some people just use garlic, but he uses garlic and ginger in his rice, so you fry that down in the chicken fat, then in goes the rice, then in goes stock, and when you boil the chicken, because it's boiled chicken rice here, so you're getting all that chicken goodness. So the rice is actually being cooked in the chicken fat, and the result is, every single grain of rice, or it should be, all separated and all covered in that lovely film of chicken fat, or mangai, as we say. Mangai, yeah? Man, man is fat, guy is chicken. <laughs> and, and let me tell you, I've eaten a lot of cow mangai in Thailand. It's one of my favorite dishes, actually. But this one smells amazing, it looks amazing. I cannot wait to try it, and I cannot wait to try the Kalmangai Todd, which is the crispy chicken as well, just to make it a little bit different from the other Kalmangai we tried when we were in Pai. Okay, look at this. How juicy does that chicken look? <laughs> so good, the boiled version of the chicken. And then the Kalmangai Todd, which as I say is the crispy chicken, deep fried perfection. I really cannot wait for that. Have the oily chicken fat fried rice, as Gary said at the start. And then of course, a nice slab of the blood cake, chicken blood cake. That really does add a richness and a creaminess to the dish. Have some sides to go with it. You've got the fresh chilies, as you would expect. You have, what's this called? Nam Tim Kalmangai. 
Yeah. Nam. Nam Jim means dipping sauce. Okay. If you say it wrong, I'll tell you what it means. You have uh, the Nam Jim Kalmangai, which is like a yeah. dipping sauce, a it's chili dipping it. sauce for, uh, for for the Kalmangai. You have some fresh ginger, and then you have this amazing, strong, chickeny broth. And I think that's winter melon with a little bit of winter melon inside it. So let's stop talking about it and let's try it. Let's get a few of those red chilies on there little bit of that dipping sauce obviously have to load up on the spice we are in thailand and actually i like to put a little bit of that chicken broth over the top oh man the flavor of that broth wow what a chicken hit definitely a little bit of that on there let's get First, a bit of the boiled chicken. Wow, I would say the boiled chicken is so, so succulent. It's the thigh, the thigh meat. I definitely prefer thigh meat over the breast meat. It's always going to be more succulent anyway, but the succulence and the flavor of that chicken is incredible. Maybe, I don't say this lightly, but maybe the best Kalman guy I've had. You can tell he's perfected this over five years. When you do something for that long and only cook one dish, it's inevitable that you become a master at what you're cooking. And he certainly is a master at what he's cooking. But I tell you what, I just couldn't take my eye off the Kalman guy Todd. So let's try that. Mm. Yeah, again, delicious, juicy, but the crispy crunch on the outside. I love that texture against the soft chicken, the soft rice. I do love Kalman Gai Todd, but the sauce, the dipping sauce is incredible. And it just makes you want to put more on it. You get, there's a slight sweetness to it, but then you get the depth of flavor and savoriness. I think it comes from the bean paste, the red bean paste inside the sauce. Mm. And finally, let's try it with a little bit of that blood cake. I said last time when I ate Kalman Guy on the video, if you didn't know that was chicken blood, you wouldn't know it was chicken blood. It's very smooth. It's very delicate flavor. It's very rich flavor, but it's it's delicate. You, you wouldn't think it's blood or offal or, or anything like that. And you definitely need to order it. Don't be put off by it. It enhances the dish and it's part of this dish. Mm. Once again with curry, what a first stop. And this is Jack. Yeah, the hello. chef here, and I just want to say thank you. I've eaten a lot of Kalman Guy, but hands down, this is the best. Best flavor, thank and you. not just the, the boiled chicken, the Kalman Guy Todd as well. It's uh -huh. so juicy, so tasty. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> and I'm not just saying that because I'm here, I mean it. This place, incredibly local, just on the street, straight on the shop front. And this is what I love about Bangkok. You have all these amazing places just walking around. Here is my company, as I said, it's Gary, the Roman cook, meeting us here. The noodles are underneath here, and I'm sure they'll show us them, but also look, homemade dumplings. The pork, which they're famous for here, mudang. And I mentioned about the noodles, they brought some out for us to see. Just look at this. I mean, it is a craft, it is a skill, to make noodles as good as that. And not only that, they have homemade wontons here too. And just look, how good they look. You can, 
you can immediately taste the difference between these and factory made but me. Now there's nothing wrong with factory made by me. I love egg noodles of all type. These are slightly fatter, they've got a little bit more bite to them. Yeah, definitely. That uh, that chew in the middle. Yeah, yeah, al dente, al dente as, we'd say, as, we'd say, as our Italian yeah. friends would say. <laughs> Um, you've got some. You've got the, the 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 richness from the pork fat. You've also got the nam namanga, the sesame oil. I forget the name in English. Uh, sesame oil as well. Great flavour from that. And then you have that sweetness and sort of five spicy Definitely taste five coming, spice coming through, through from the from the mordang. And the, the five spice adds a sweetness, but actually the sweetness from the crab. I don't know if you've had a piece with the crab yet. The crab is so sweet, so light, and it's the crab leg meat. Nice chunks of crab leg meat there. Oh, that is so good. You see, I actually steamed it on the little hot plate bit rather than putting it in, like boiling it. Usually they just dunk it in with the... Yeah, and that's when it can get overcooked, right? Yeah. I love the, the muldang is not, um, it's not dry because it's got a, quite a heavy level of fat. You know, usually it's that real lean cut and it can be really, really dry, but this is like almost sort of bacon-like. It is. It is, it is like streaky bacon, it looks like. It's the same amount of fat in there. Or like a guan, it's not quite a guan charlie, it's a thicker cut, but mm. fat is definitely flavor for me. Mm. Oh. Pad Thai Narek Teak, or Cowboy Pad Thai. As you can see by this cool dude's hat. Now, I will be the first to admit, I'm not the biggest fan of Pad Thai, even though it is probably the most well-known dish in Thailand. Like Gary, the roaming cook, promises me that this will be the one to convert me and make me fall in love with Pad Thai. It smells good, it looks good, it's order, and once again, check it out. My God. I said I didn't like Pad Thai. I might be very quickly changing that opinion. You see why they call him the cowboy, right? Uh, Mr. Joe, All right. I've ordered Prataron, which is hot plate with those incredible prawns. And I said, at the other place, the heat of the wok. But look at the heat of the wok of this one. It is absolutely insane. It's like the back of a jet engine. He's just frying off some of that tofu. In goes a bit of the radish. Egg. Man, I love watching people do this. They are just such masters. Master of the wok. Squeeze of lime onto that. I want to get all of that because the reason I don't like Pad Thai is sometimes it's a bit too sweet. So let's get that lime on just to try and counteract that. And I think you won't be the most impressed if I don't go straight in for those prawns, sticky prawns. First off with the head, as I said in the last place. Oh man. Shouldn't really be doing that in Bangkok, but come on. The prawn still has the shell on, so I need to peel it, and I'm getting stuck in. Don't be tempted to try and use your fork. The sauce on the outside, I have washed my hands, by the way. <laughs> the sauce on the outside is so good, and it's the pad thai sauce, so it's gonna be all over the pad thai. Let's get into that prawn, that juicy, juicy prawn and you can see again they cook them here so perfectly with the wok I'm trying to do this gracefully which I'm not doing a very good job of because it's very hot just look at that look at the size of that prawn wow prawns in the last place where we had the pad krapao, they were good. But this one is insane. Let's try some of those noodles. Oh. Wow. 
again, it's just so balanced. Yes, there is sweetness. You have the acidity from the lime juice, the saltiness from the sauce, a touch of chili kick, there's a little bit at the back of the throat, and then the different textures. You've got the cashew nut, the tofu, the soft, bouncy tofu, the soft but chewy noodles, and the egg that wraps around it, and then you have the crunch of that dried shrimp and shallot. Chase with a green onion. I'm a little surprised. I do that. I'm shocked in Bangkok. I won't be doing that as the title. <laughs> but I didn't expect it. I mean, when I saw him, I knew I would like it. He's passionate. It looks good. The taste of the wok is in this. I mean, that flame is so strong. Can't not get the taste of the wok in this. But the flavour, I didn't expect it to be so good, really. All right, this is what you're looking for. Easy to find. Wang Nai, user's choice 2017. And uh, that's the sign if you're looking for it. Again, just a few steps from this awesome little railway market. Everything around here, I guess you could say, revolves around this railway market, or this railway station, let's say. Okay, so when it says egg yolk ice cream, it really is egg yolk ice cream. I mean, <laughs> I presume it's made with the egg yolks anyway. Ice cream is made with egg yolks. And you get the egg yolk on top. You have a whole selection. You can have it with all sorts of other things. But to be honest, I've kind of had enough. So, I mean, look at this one. This one is, this one's incredible. But 60 baht, that's the one we're going for. Guys, I'll say again, I wasn't having a laugh when I say it's raw. I mean, that literally is a raw egg yolk on top of my ice cream. Not something I've had. I guess there's actually only one thing for it, to break the egg yolk. Oh man. Okay, it's already starting to freeze on the ice cream. Look at that. I mean, it looks amazing actually, to be honest. It literally is a raw egg yolk. Let's get that mixed in. With one hand, I'm gonna struggle. We'll try and get it mixed in a little bit and then we'll give it a try. Hopefully, I mean, you can cook eggs with ice, right? <laughs> I'm sure it'll be safe. No salmonella here. Now it just looks like a custard. Now it's mixed in with that ice cream. So I've tried to mix it in as much as I can. And the ice cream actually looks really good, to be honest. And never a bad way to end a meal, especially after so much food, with ice cream. Right on the street here. <laughs> but I'm a little apprehensive about that egg yolk inside it. But it will be fine, I'm sure. Anyway. All mixed in. Let's give it a try. Mm. Okay, that is really good. First flavor is actually of coconut. Really creamy. Really very creamy, actually. The most creamy homemade ice cream that I've had in Thailand, actually. Normally, the ice crystals are quite big because they don't churn it like we do in Europe when we make ice cream, or Italians make it with gelato where it's nice and smooth. But the egg yolk is frozen into these little chunks of rich egg yolk. It gives pops of richness. Mm. Actually, they're a little bit chewy. I like that. I like that a lot. 60 baht. But honestly, it's probably the best ice cream I've had in Thailand. Maybe it is because it's more like that smooth, rich European ice cream that I'm used to. But yeah, give this one a go when you're in Talat Phu. Great way to end a meal.